That's twisted. This is Mark McNeese with my co-host Rick Rose, and you're listening to another edition of The Twist. Welcome back to The Twist Podcast, everybody. Uh, it's been a few weeks. This is Mark here back in New Jersey. How are you doing, Rick, and where are you? Well, it's me, and I'm walking County Trunk R or something. It's my morning walk in Madison, Wisconsin. It is garbage day here, folks. Wow. It was, yeah, they didn't pick up our garbage for two weeks. It's crazy, but that's another story. So what does that mean, garbage day? Is that a big thing in Madison? No, not really. It's just weekly garbage pickup. But I'm telling you what the scenery is besides beautiful cornfields here in Madison and Sun Prairie, home of George O'Keefe. I'm seeing a lot of green recycled cans, you know. Oh, OK. I thought it was I thought it was like um, Oktoberfest or something like garbage day in Madison was a big thing. <laughs> no, but Oktoberfest is big in Wisconsin. We will talk about it. We later. are going to talk you, about that. You've been on a big trip, so you've got lots to talk about. Yes. And also, we first of all, <clears throat> oh, I want to dedicate the show really quickly to the late, great William. She was one of our two remaining cats. We had to send her back to the universe a week before we went on our cruise. So I just want to give her a, a acknowledgement because she was such a wonderful presence in our lives. But our new, you know, we're back. We talked about rejiggering. Is that the right word? Um, I like it. I don't want to offend anybody, so I'm not sure if I, if that's a, I don't know. I don't know. Who, but anyways, we're going to redo, we're redoing the podcast a little bit. We're going to talk, we're going to do more reviews and stuff because I want it to be a little bit more engaging than the headlines because honestly, I get burned out on the headlines. Well, yeah, we heard from our folks. Those of you listening told us what you wanted. So we're going to make those changes. Right. And, um, you know, and plus for us, too, I think it's just more interesting. Like you're always traveling all over the place. I see it on Facebook. You're here. You're there. You got uh, like 10 different kinds of beers that you're posting about. And I thought, why not add a little bit of travel and review and movie review and cultural review to get, just spice it up a little bit. And then, like you said, we just went on a 14 night cruise that was awesome. So I'm going to talk about Today, I'm going to talk about the first part of that when we were in the U.S., which is Boston, Portland, and Bahaba. And then you you got your stuff. You're going to talk about Oktoberfest and uh, just different things. But then we'll also do a little bit of the headlines and commentary. So I, you, we're going to try it out and see what happens and figure out the best, you know, the most uh, efficient way to do this. But No, we're... that's good. And we got to remind folks they can follow us on Instagram now. I think you're keeping that active. i got to do better about adding some pictures. We are on Instagram at the Twist Podcast. We've been on Twitter for a long time. We got like, I don't know, like 1,600 followers on Twitter. But uh, anyways, folks, this is, I you know, I typed this up because I thought it might help to have a script. We've got a make-believe chairs. We've got a make-believe chaise lounge, which we've had for a long time. And our make-believe green room is now pink. Pink room. Pink is bold, unapologetic, straight up, and color fluid. No, I uh, love it. And that was a good choice of color. I know you did it without consulting me, but I appreciate what you all did. Well, p pink was a pink was prior to World War One, pink and blue. The, it was reversed. Pink was considered a bold male color. Did you know that? Well, no, but that explains why we have such gender confusion right now. But it's true. Pink was for men. Anyways, we're going to do we're going to do reviews and then um, uh, headline stuff and then commentary. I mean, we can't. Yeah, I love we, it. We can't not talk about Brett Kavanaugh and all this insane shit that's going on. But, oh man, uh, there's some crazy shit out there in the world, and you can't ignore it. You're right. Plus, that's what makes the twist fun. It twists things up. But definitely, I encourage you guys to follow us on Instagram. I follow Mark there on thetwistpodcast.com, and I see some cool pictures of your travel. So, and we get to hear we get to hear you gasping for breath while you walk. <laughs> I'm on an uphill, folks. Okay. I'm caught up with breath now. Okay. Yeah, you should take a break Done. here. You ready? Yeah, I'm rested. Okay. I'm rested. Anyways, Frank and I went on just went on a two week cruise. Now I happen to love cruising. I never cruised until I met Frank. That's my husband, and he took me on a three nighter just to see if I was okay with it. Just like he brought me out to this house in the country one weekend, uh, twelve plus years ago, to see if I actually liked living in the country because it would have been a deal breaker, and That's I loved cool. it. Now, the nice. cru I ended up. Lo I love cruising now. I know you've been on a few, but I just, what I like about it is I just completely decompress and I relax and I love days at sea. I get massages. I got a, I had a fabulous leg massage. I had a shave that took an hour to shave and massage my face. And then, um, the last, the last thing I did was I did another foot thing, a pedicure. But then we went to wonderful um, ports, and I just want to talk a little bit about it. It was the Celebrity, Celebrity Summit, which is a 91,000-ton ship. Not huge, and it's 20 years old. It's going into dry dock soon. 
and you could tell that it was a little bit aged, uh, especially with the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi, which now is kind of mandatory, was horrible. It was horrible. We went on the ship, I think, four years ago, and it still sucks. But hopefully, when they when they bring it out of dry dock in a few months, it's going to be um, they're going to upgrade that. Now, I don't know if we would take this ship again because we want. No, I, I got a common. I got it. Go ahead. You want no, to we want to go on newer ships, and and so I don't know that we would be on the summit again. I I will say the crew was amazing, especially the restaurant crew. Sinan and his support staff were just fabulous, and I I said that on the review. Now, uh, before I get into the port cities, what were you going to interrupt me with? Well, yeah, well, not interruption. I think this should be a conversation <laughs> because along the way, I have questions that I am the voice. Oh, of that's the right. It's the twist. We, you know. It is. <laughs> no, two things. Number one, I do love time on sea, so when I go cruising, I do. I would do an all sea cruise if I could because. I like that getaway. Yeah, cr Atlantic, two, Atlantic Crossing would be fabulous. That's great. Let's be clear, though. This was not one of those gay cruises, right? Not that it matters, but it was. No, and I'm glad you brought that up because, Frank, and we've never done a gay cruise. I've never done a gay cruise. And I have friends who have. And actually, I would like to try it one time, uh, only if it's on a really big ship. Um, and they just had one that went to the Mediterranean. Some friends of mine went on. And I think I would enjoy being on a cruise with 3,000 gay, gay people. I think it'd be interesting, but all cruises also have the Friends of Dorothy gathering, don't they? Like, well, yeah, but they changed the name because they decided that was too old school, and and like kids would show up, people with their kids, because they thought it was Dorothy from the well, it is Dorothy oh. from the Wizard of Oz. But anyways, they said it was confusing. I happen to have liked it, but it was oh, it no. was like you know it was like something old gay people use, so they don't do it anymore, and they'll just say LGBT group. They do oh, okay, have those, um, but on this particular, and we've been on cruises where we met a lot of gay people. The last one we went on. We ended up meeting this group of gay, of gay guys, and we would all have dinner together. It was really nice. This a gaggle of gays. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this, yeah. this particular cruise, uh, and it has to do with the fact that it was after school started. So people, you know, parents are not going on a cruise with their kids because school is in session. And also because it's two weeks. And now you, mo most people who can take two weeks off to go on a cruise are old. That's just the truth. So I did say to Frank, um, did I lose you? No, you took a picture or something. I did. It said, uh, snap a picture while you're chatting and share it. But go ahead. No, I was going to say, you can't really get it. We can't get away with anything anymore because we're all oh, you hear watching everything. each other all the time. But um, no, I said, said to Frank, it's like, it, this was like being on a floating nursing home. And as much as I loved the cruise, I did say, next time, let's pick a time of year or something where we know there's uh, going to be smart. some younger people. By younger, I mean 40. I mean, there wow. could have been a bunch of 40-year-olds and I'd have been happy. But wow. this was these, this was a geriatric cruise seriously oh you know I, I wrote i wrote on facebook that the average age was 72 and the walking oh the walking speed was one mile per hour i mean you have to wow. be you have to be nice when you go around people but we were constantly walking around people because they were like you know hobbling around the ship That's but it was cool. a great cruise now i'm going to do my ports real quick uh we the first stop was boston we saw our friend larry there i love boston but we've been there a bunch of times so we didn't we just got together and walked around and had lunch and then Portland, which was a really cool city, Portland, Maine. I hear, course, I yeah. hear, it's beautiful brick and Mason streets and all it that. It is. I love the architecture and the feel. It's very, uh, it has a very progressive feel to it. And I found a bookstore there where I got a signed autograph copy of a P.D. James novel. Now she's passed away, but she was a master of mystery, and you know I'm a mystery writer. My new audio book is out: Black Cat, White Paws, narrated by Holly Palant, the daughter of Jack. Okay, just threw that in there. But Very anyways, cool. and then we went to Bahaba, and we've been there twice too. That was our second time there. Bahaba is really fun. We went on a ghost tour <laughs> of, of Bar Mark, Harbor. Mark, come on, just say it like it really is. Bar Harbor. Bar Harbor. But you know, you used to do the whole ghost tour. Group. I know. We went on a walking ghost tour, and this lady was all in costume. And I couldn't tell if she was like one of those paranormal researcher types because she was talking about all this paranormal stuff or if it was totally scripted, you know, bullshit. But um, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. And we had a great time. And then we got back onto the sea, and we headed for Canada. And that's what I'm going to be talking about next week. This is a two-parter, everybody, because it was two weeks. It was so much to talk about. But next week, I'm going to hit... Quebec City, which is you gotta go, whether it's a cruise or you fly or you take a train, you gotta go to Quebec City. And I then, would agree, one of my favorite cities. But I have a question about the ghost tour because, like you said, I used to do them in Hannibal and Shreveport, where I used to live. I haven't started one in Madison, but in a nutshell, what was your favorite story from that trip, true or untrue? What what made probably the brothel, the 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 the, bra the restaurant where everybody was having, you know, brunch. It used to be a brothel, and huh. uh, 
the guys would pay it. They would like stamp. They used to be, a, there was a, I can't remember the term, but the loggers, it used to, there were a lot of loggers in that area and they would wear oh, these cool. special shoe, shoes that, so they wouldn't fall off the logs and they would get in fights and then they would kick each other in the face with these spike shoes. And it was so common that they had an, they call it loggers pox or something like that. So there was a lot of, a bunch of interesting stories. Love it. Love it. I'd have to go. And you ate some good food, too. And you can find Yeah, some I only food gained three pounds. Our friend Michael, who went with us in his own cabin, I always say that because there were not three of us in a cabin. Oh, geez. His cabin was bigger, too, which I got to say. That was the other thing I said to Frank. If you're going to spend two weeks on a ship, make sure you check out the the footage of the room. and Because uh, Michael had a nice cabin. It was like one we had the last time, but ours was really small. But anyways... Yeah, that's uh, a good travel he tip. He gained nine pounds. That was the point of that. Oh, one. geez. That's crazy. No, no. It's also a travel tip there. Check it out. I mean, because there's probably views of rooms now. Yeah, before. there'll be. Th just... There are at least it'll have the footage. Get At least have a nice couch that you can lay on and yeah. a desk where it doesn't feel like a little five-year-old grammar school desk. Wow. Well, that's cool. And where can people read? Like, I know I read one of your reviews. Haven't you posted some restaurant reviews? Oh, just on markmcneese.com. Well, that's you know, not a just. That's awesome. Mark has his own website, folks. Yes, but I didn't review the cruise because part of me, we got the podcast. I'm writing novels. I'm writing, angel, you know, I'm doing these other writing projects. But um, yeah, so I'm not really doing the reviews with it. Certainly not with the cruise. But yeah, markrickneese.com. You can f see everything about my life that I'm willing to tell you. That's right. You can uh, probably the podcast is there. Mark I won't talk about my drinking in prep school. Oh, geez. and the women that I expose myself to. So don't don't look for that. Years ago, right? Uh, yes, yes, and actually, uh, actually, it didn't happen because I was so drunk I don't remember it, and that's so. That oh, oh my God! That, I'm You're telling you, I said that to I said that to Frank about Kavanaugh. I said, you know what? He probably doesn't remember it, so he can actually oh, sit no. there and say I didn't do it and pass a polygraph right. if he had to because he doesn't remember doing oh, it. Oh, oh, we'll get you know there. You one thing I like about our new format? I was so relaxed with the talk of the cruise, and the minute you weave the old format into the show, <laughs> the I, got, I got my heart started racing. Besides, no, we're going to get there at the end. Yeah, we will. Well, so my experience is, you know, like I mentioned garbage days. I mentioned being in Madison because right now I moved back to the Midwest and I love it. I love my life here. I love seeing fall color. 40 degrees this morning. If you haven't had a chance to check out Madison, Wisconsin, your travels, folks do. But it is now a place I call home. I'm editing two shows. Mark mentioned his other writing projects, one of which is Into the Outdoors, a show Mark and I created 16 years ago. It's won like 13 Emmys. Mark, 17, it got two, I believe it's 17. 17 but who's oh, counting? Okay. It got two Emmy nominations yesterday. I forgot to tell you. You got to send me something so I can post about it. And bra I want to humble brag. I love to humble oh, brag. I know, but it's just we created it. We didn't write it because now we're going to be writing the whole thing again, you know. But Yes, yeah, but I can say, still I'll say, look, this is a show I created, and I'm so proud and happy for them and so humbled to have been part of this. Well, that's cool. And we got Lumpaloo or whoever used to work on it gone. And the new guy that writes it is awesome, by the way. Same to Dan Bertal and shout out to him and his two Emmy nominations. Also, Boondock Nation, the show I also came back to work on, got its first Emmy, no Emmy nomination after being two seasons out. It's a travel log snowmobile show. And I'll be talking that, about that a lot this winter because I'll be going out west to Wyoming. You're an Emmy machine, Rick. And just pumping it out, Mark. But <laughs> I'm currently working on two episodes of Into the Outdoors. So what's fortunate for me being an editor is I actually get to go places in my travels to shoot the show, but also assembling the show. I get to see things. The two themes of this are one is garbage waste management and waste avoidance. And oh, where that's why you brought that whole garbage thing up. I like that. Well, I really didn't. So what happened is after listening to you, I thought, well, shit, that would be the nice angle about my travels because it kind of ties in with how I open the show. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. So I win the Emmy Awards, Mark. You mean the noms? The noms. Oh, yeah. But, you know, those noms will t turn into awards. And well, and it's an honor just to be nominated. Everybody knows that. It is. And, you know, it's awesome. But the other show I'm working on is timber harvesting and timber sustainability. And it's really one of those cool things when you're out there traveling the United States or even Canada, for that matter. And you look at the wood resources of our country. And one of the segments we did was follow the oak tree from planting it to harvesting it to sustainability of the tree to what what the tree becomes, millwork and all that. So that's pretty exciting. But amidst all of my edit time, I took a trip recently to judge the America's Sweetheart pageant. Now, I had mentioned that, too, when we were in the lovely pink room earlier on the show. Yes. And it's a cool experience. It's in Hupston, Illinois. I thought it was Hoopstown, but when you go there, you realize it's Hupston, Illinois. 
And it's kind of cool because what the concept of it is, first runner-ups from Miss America state levels all come and compete. And often the winner of Miss National Sweetheart then goes on to win Miss America the following year because it's the gals who are not quite ready to be Miss America, but they compete. So while you go and judge this pageant, which is huge, it's like judging a national pageant because it is 70, 50 year with these other incredible judges, three of the five of us had doctorates. I was not one with a doctor, but the three women were, and they were incredible. One taught at uh, Brown, one was a provost at a school in Rhode Island, a college in Rhode Island. The other was my friend Desi, who was the star of Survivor, by the way. And she was a former Miss Virginia. But amidst, amidst this going on, it takes place during the National Corn Festival. This is a huge corn fest. So you get to see this small town Americana in operation. You get to crown a national queen that could often go on and win a national title on the Miss America stage. And it was just great. Free corn for everyone at this festival, Mark. It's a weekend-long festival over Labor Day. And you just bring your tote bags and you get as much free corn as you want at this festival. I like that. And I just looked it up. National Sweetheart uh, Pageant. Pretty cool, huh? <clears throat> it is very cool. And we love pageants. Oh, I know. I, I love them. And you judged the Miss uh, Miss Quincy pageant. For me I know. A highlight of my many years in, in uh, doing stuff. But I do want to shout out, because you mentioned Oktoberfest, another travel thing. If you're in the mood, guys, Oktoberfest, of course, launched in Munich, Germany, years ago. What's interesting about Oktoberfest, it actually is a September festival, because... Uh, historically, when this started back in 1810, believe it or not, it always ended on the first Sunday of October. So you back out the 14 days or so of the festival and because uh, it's a two week long festival. So this year, Oktoberfest, the real one, the one happening in Munich, Germany or Munich in Germany, started September 14th. But there are great ones all across the country. If you get a chance, a shout out to the one in La Crosse, Wisconsin, that's happening September 27th to September 30th. So the first one was held in 1961. Crowning of Miss Lacrosse Oktoberfest there. Great things happening. And if you don't go to that one, check out the one in New Glarus, Wisconsin, outside of Madison. That's also the same weekend. And New Glarus, Mark, is America's little Switzerland. And also has a brewery called um, New Glarus Brewing, which does a beer that's only in Wisconsin. It doesn't have national distribution. So if you want to be a real beer connoisseur, as Mark mentioned, I am. You have to go to Wisconsin. You have to go to that brewery where you can get Spotted Cow beer. Many of our listeners know about Spotted Cow because it's one of those things you have to have when you're in Wisconsin. Can you have it smuggled to you? Well, you can take it. Across state places. lines? You can. I've been to Wyoming and I've been to bring bring your own beverage place and people are drinking Spotted Cow because they bring it across country with them. I like that. And I like the name too. Now also, Oktoberfests, like you mentioned, are really everywhere. So if you can't get to Wisconsin and see these... Look for one in your neighborhood. I know they've got them around here in Lambertville. Lambertville is a Halloween town. They go, nut, they go nuts at Halloween. So I think that um, I'll be talking about that later. Actually, that'll be a nice one of my nice podcasts to talk about. Um, but yeah, so look for one near you if you can't get there. And then just sort of go there in honor of the ones that Rick's talking about. Yep. Go out and enjoy your travels, guys. It's and have a spotted cow. You got it. Now, are we? Is that is that our review stuff for this week? Are we on to the headlines? Yeah, I think it's enough. I do want to say, like you mentioned, Halloween is a precast to what's going on. I usually go down to Universal Studios where they have Halloween Horror Nights. Voted like In Florida. Halloween. You go to Florida? Florida, Florida, Florida. Wow. To Universal, but this year Halloween Horror Nights, you know, where they take over all the sound stages at Universal, and all the streets have haunted stuff and chainsaws chasing after you. This year's theme is like B-rated movies, and my friend Susie, who you know, only gave it a six this year. She works down there. So I'm not going to waste my travel down there. But if you're out and about traveling for Halloween, consider going to one of those cool things. And, and Mark, yeah, you'll have to review the one in that little town in New Jersey sometime on the show. Excellent. Now, I just want to throw in one last thing, because, you know, we, we, do, we do like throw in gross stuff about this. So that one thing I was going to, because I had my list of pros and cons about cruising. The toilets on a cruise ship don't have all, they don't have any water in the bowl. I'm just telling you. Ugh, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? When you flush them, they go like, and it's like yeah. it's like a, it's like the power of of the universe sucking through that little toilet. But they don't hold water. So Ugh, I really don't remember that. <laughs> Nasty. Yes. Ugh. Anyway, Ugh. I don't know why I threw that in there because I had jotted it down. But I'm now I'm ready to talk some stuff, some culture headline stuff. You hit it, baby. Ring that bell. Ring that bell. Uh, Mayo Chup 
These are just, you know, because I'm doing more fun things and I'm steering clear of the politics until until it's unavoidable, which it is. But mayo chup is now an official condiment. Now, we went to places like in Canada, especially where they get when you get French fries, they bring you mayonnaise and ketchup. You know what I'm talking about? I do. Yeah. And so the Heinz now is putting out it's called mayo chup. Uh, I think it came out. Yeah, it came out in September. Um well, it is, it is, oh yeah, it is September. But yeah, it's mayonnaise and ketchup combined. And it's just in a bottle. So now you don't have to get two little little paper cups of each. You don't remember? We forecasted that on the show. I talked about it like a few months ago before it came out. I'm sure you did because you're prescient. You're you're on the tip of all this stuff. <laughs> when but. it comes to food, and I want to let you know, being prescient, ooh, here it goes. Hazelnut, Nutella, filled M&Ms are on the horizon too, folks. Wow. And like, it's funny because how many people don't even know what Nutella is? Well, I think it's kind of trending. Well, it's been around for a long time. Yeah. Some people like it on their pancakes versus peanut butter, but. I like it. Anyway. I like it on toast. My um, news story. I, well, I oh, I thought with... that was it. <laughs> <laughs> no. I want to talk to you about new words that are being allowed by Scrabble because I know you love words. Okay. Because I got more food things. Oh, hit the food, then I'll hit the words. Yes, please. Yeah, do. I'll just run through mine, and then you can do yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah, love it. We love won't it. go in depth. I'll let you know when I'm done, so you don't have to interrupt me. <laughs> oh, jeez, um, I'm going to use that today on everybody. Baked. Before I wait, no, let me get this out before I start a conversation and say, "Hey guys, I'll let you know when I'm done, so you don't have to interrupt me." Love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good office tool too. <laughs> I'm got, I really am going to test it. I'll report back next time we're together. Okay. But go ahead. Let me Baked, go. then boiled. One main restaurant is sedating lobsters with marijuana smoke. Now, oh, I didn't geez. read into it in depth. I don't know if they're like, you know, taking a hit and then blowing it on the lobster. I don't know. But they're, but because, you know, people often will say boiling lobsters is very cruel. We steam them at the giant. And I'm telling you, I just got used to throwing these live lobsters into a steamer and turning the timer on. Oh my God! I didn't know you did that. Oh, I, when I was in seafood, yeah. But lobsters, I'm. This is not to defend the cruelty, but lobsters are really stupid, and they eat each other. So Ugh. it's not like when they die, they eat the corpses. Absolutely, they do because I see them in the tank. You got to take the dead lobsters out because oh. they all eat them. Oh. So it's not like these are higher consciousness beings. But uh, well, this one, this restaurant is getting them stoned before, so that then they can like just bliss out in the boiling water and um. Oh. Miley, here's another one. I'll just, that's that's what we need the bell for. Um, Miley Cyrus's sister is selling her tears online. They're only twelve thousand dollars a bottle. I know you're going to get yours. Oh jeez. Beyonce's former drummer accuses her of extreme witchcraft. I thought this was fun. Um, one of her former dancers said that, according to documents, uh, Beyonce's former drummer Kimberly, which is a woman, so you know, woman power. I do like that. Is attempting to get a. a is that an airplane? No, it was just a car going by. But she oh. has an all-female band, always has, by the way. I, I really like that. I didn't know that. That's I, I love Beyonce even more now. But um, she, anyways, her former drummer got a restraining order against her, saying that Beyonce is a, pr a practitioner of extreme witchcraft and magic spells of sexual molestation that she has used against. Oh, come on. You don't believe that? Oh, no. I mean, they say she's Intelligentsia or whatever that group is, Mensa, and now they say this? Oh, Intelligentsia my. Mensa. I, got, I, just got, I just got two more and then I'll leave you alone. Um, on ecstasy, octopuses reached out for a hug, you know, because I've never done ecstasy. If if it wasn't really around when I was doing drugs, um, right. that tells you how old I am because I stopped doing drugs a long time ago. But they tested um, MDMA, which is Molly or ecstasy. They gave it to octop octopuses and f who are not very social animals and found that they just started hugging each other. So there, it's about genetics and like how connected we are genetically to octopuses. But I liked it. I thought that was fascinating. My last one was uh, uh, Democrats are up 12 in a new generic poll. That I think was from two days ago. So I think we're going to take Congress, at least take the House. And I'm hoping for the Senate, really. Yeah, I think it could be a big year. Michael Moore's got a new movie out, by the way, if you haven't seen it. And it kind of I can't wait to see it. Now you sound great. Yeah, I don't know. But we're back on and you're live recording us, right? Yes, I started. Uh, yeah, I, we're recording. So let's keep moving. Yeah, we are having a discussion about the word octopi. So sorry, guys. Yeah, the Michael Moore movie. Go see it. Definitely. So I was mentioning earlier, I know how you love words. And I want to tell you, Scrabble's added 300 words to their dictionary. 
Now, that had a word that you can use the letter Q without the letter U, which is a big deal, you know, because for years you get the letter Q and you can use it. It's a word, I think it describes the currency in Azerbaijan. Is that the country? Azerbaijan? Azerbaijan. You know? Azerbaijan. Yeah, it's a unit of currency. It's called Kopik or something. The word OK is OK to use now. Other new words are things like sheeple, way back, emoji, facepalm, frowny, nubber, and puggle, whatever those mean. Well, I saw I saw recently that Merriam-Webster added a bunch of words, and one of them was bougie. Now, bougie is black slang for bourgeois, and it's been around for decades. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I was hearing bougie back in the '80s, so I'm like, why are you adding this word as if you as if it's a new thing? And I was being accused of being bougie way back in the '80s. Yeah, I don't get it. But anyway, maybe I just wasn't acceptable to that. Also, new the you know I love my weird stuff like we talked about. Uh, like piercings and body mutilation, all that stuff. Uh, Guinness Book of New World, Guinness Book of World Records came out with the new edition for whatever. Where are we? 2019. Most body modifications. This guy has 516 piercings and implants. Oh Longest time controlling a soccer ball with the soles on the roof of a moving car. That is just plain stupid. I didn't look at that one. Most powered donuts eaten in a minute. How many powered donuts do you think one could eat in a minute, Mark? Twenty six. This one says he was only able to eat nine powder donuts. That doesn't oh, okay. sound right. Well, full donut. I could do 26. Most sausages made in a minute. 78 sausages in one minute. That's a world record. Is that a Brett Kavanaugh thing? No. Oh, oh no. God. A different kind of sausage. You gotta go back. How many were made in a minute? Uh, 78. Wow. Crazy. And in the oldest minute? DJ in the world is Sumi Rock. It says she, from Tokyo, she's 83 years old. I Love like that. Spin. I like yeah, the show, that, too. I think it's fabulous. It's kind of cool. Talking about Halloween, here's another story. If you happen to be in St. Louis at the Six Flags, they're having a contest, Mark. Six people are going to be allowed to pick. They're going to be picked to compete. Each of them are given their own two-by-seven-foot se- two coffin that the park describes as slightly used. And if you last all of, I, I forget, like 36 hours in there or whatever, but you are allowed to use your phone so you can watch Netflix or whatever, you get $300. But if everybody, all six make it, you have to go into a raffle when it's $300. So I don't know if it's worth your time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I'll check it out. It's pretty cool. And then the last story I have is about this guy in Wisconsin, just up the street. He was in a car chase and in Campbellsport, Wisconsin, right outside of the hometown of Fond du Lac, where I was born. He was in a car chase with another guy. Car ran out, so he got out of the car. He started running, and he was being chased by the police officers in Campbellsport for robbing a store or something. And the mosquitoes were attacking him so bad he had to give in. He goes, hey, I surrendered. Just get me a can of mosquito spray. They handcuffed the guy. And he's like, could you please slap my forehead? I've got seven mosquitoes biting my forehead. Wow. He was like yeah, mosquito they're... bait. They don't <laughs> bother me. Mosquitoes don't like me. I don't know why. Oh, they love they love you here in Wisconsin. I bet if you showed up at Oktoberfest, they'd be eating you alive. In October? They should be gone in October. <sighs> yeah, they're kind of gone this morning. I just have cars that are interrupting our conversation. But anyway, it was a great conversation today, That's Mark. okay. You'll be somewhere stationary next week in a nice, quiet room. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. You're so you're so chill <laughs> from the cruise. I bet if you hadn't taken that two-week cruise, you'd be on me like, why not rice yelling at Excuse me Excuse about- me. I had to go back to work last- <laughs> yesterday. I was I was gone for over two weeks <laughs> yesterday, and I was on the night shift. Not the night shift. I was on the second shift yesterday. So I, I worked from 1230 to 9. Uh, oh geez! Bacon, frying chicken, bacon chicken, <laughs> testing. You got to take temperatures all the goddamn time, and then you got to clean the fryers. Oh, it's so disgusting! But um, <laughs> but I love my job, you know. So <laughs> that's good. Well, welcome back to the world. Any other final comments, like the old twist? Any other, like? Well, I mean, of course, I have to say, we're not we're not apolitical people. You and I. It's just right. not possible to really be ourselves and not bring this stuff up but i think i mean the whole kavanaugh thing is appalling to me because they're going to push him through i hope i hope that murkowski at least and and collins who's a fraud i've never liked susan collins i've always thought she was a con because she's not moderate that's bullshit she plays that card you know and gets her little quavering voice and all of her attention and she, she always votes the way they want her to except for the aca but then she turned around and voted for the tax bill which basically crippled it anyways so anyways um but you know they're gonna have i i i'm not sure who to i i believe the women i will say that i'm not going to prevaricate on that i believe the women at least some of them i believe susan whatever christine 
Blasey Ford. I totally believe that she had that experience and that Kavanaugh was involved. But um, my biggest issue, because I've heard people defend him, especially on the right, oh, it was in high school. Okay, fine. But he's lying about it. He's not in high school anymore. He's 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 about to be, you know, put onto the Supreme Court with a lifetime of appointment of a, of immense power, and he's lying about it to the Senate. That's my biggest issue with him, aside from the, all the crazy, inappropriate shit he did when he was a drunken teenager. But uh, I think they're going to ram him through, and I think they're going to pay dearly for it. I certainly hope so, because. In the end, you know, they have been just like I think Democrats were obsessed with the presidency to to our to our detriment by having right. all the by losing a thousand seats across the country in legislatures and governorships. Right. I think the right at this point is so obsessed with the Supreme Court and Roe v. Wade that they've completely compromised any sense of moral standing. And uh, it's like, okay, you can have the goddamn Supreme Court seat. Fine. We're going to fucking put you out of power. Mm -hmm. uh, because they think, they think, um, with some justification, that we live in a country now where our, where the Supreme Court is a super legislature. Power, like a super decision government. maker. Yeah, it can, absolutely. It can, just out, it can just, you know, partisanly declare what is law the law and what isn't and right. you know it has it has gotten to that to the extent to some extent i think our country is in really really oh, bad has. shape in so many ways but go on take your supreme court sell your soul yet again to a person who is and and call yourself a christian because that's what you're not you rick but you know what i mean these evangelicals yeah. they love they want this guy on the they, it's all about abortion and they don't care that he that fucking jesus wouldn't have lunch with this man or you know donald trump uh, they don't care. And to me, it's like I said many times before, then I'll shut up. It's like Satan saying, you know, I'm going to give you what takes all these people out to the desert and says, I'll give you all the power of the American presidency. And all you got to do is is uh, bow down to me and worship Donald Trump. Uh, and they said, yes. I mean, Jesus said no. He ended up on the cross because he wouldn't compromise. But they have no problem compromising for power. And uh, go on, man. We're going to have the Senate and the Congress and we're going to we're going to cripple this presidency. And that's just around the corner, Mark. I love that vision. Let us hope, because if I'm wrong, I'm not going to be all depressed and kill myself. But I think, I certainly, I believe we're going to take the House. I believe that with like a 90% certainty. Yeah, and there's some great stuff on the horizon. I feel it too. Go see the Michael Moore movie. I really like Oh, I want to see it for it sure. Do you have all any? Right. Do you have anything, or is that it? you just no, going to let no. me vent? I really love the way you worded everything you said. I mean, if I didn't, I would have... I would have gone in for a for a more poignant end to the show, but you always have a way with words, Mark. I, honestly, I'm I'm quiet. Because I'm a I'm writer. Reflecting, I know, but I'm just kind of reflecting on the way you stated what you did and how you tied it in with Jesus Christ, and it's so 100% spot on accurate. So thank you for sharing that at the end of the show. Yes, and we don't have any quotes because because everybody like just live your own quote. How's that? Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's powerful. Now I'm going back to recline on our pink sofa. And I'm going to enjoy my day. I want you to have a good day, too. And everybody take a shower. Listening. You've been working. You've been walking hard. Take a shower. Yeah, you can hear it in me, can't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Keto diet, everyone. It's the right thing. It's a good thing for you. Okay. That's, All right. That's have a good coffee, day, everybody. Right? Anyways. Okay. We'll talk right. next week with more reviews and views and news. Love you. Mean it. Ciao. Bye.